So having a block storage is all fine, but you can't just rely on that all the time, isn't it? You need a second help which can hold your data, which can be used later or which can be accessed when needed in the future. So to do that, you need to back your data or in computing terms, we call it taking a backup. I'm sure you all are aware of what a backup is. So you are working on something important and you save your file. And if you fear losing the data, you might as well copy it to a separate location to keep it safe. And what you have exactly done here is you have taken a backup. That's as simple as it is. For the same reason, when we talk about keeping our data secure or preserving it in AWS, we call it taking snapshots. And that's what we will discuss now. So what you can do here is in AWS EBS snapshots or elastic block storage snapshots, you can back up the data on your AWS EBS volumes to Amazon S3 by taking point in time snapshots. Point in time usually refers to a given point of time where you can back up your data on your AWS EBS. So snapshots are incremental backups, which means that only the blocks on the device that have changed after your most recent snapshot are saved. This minimizes the time required to create the snapshot and saves on storage cost by not duplicating data. So this is basically done by creating the backup of your Delta so that you don't have to store the duplicate data as your backup again and again. One more important thing is that when you delete a snapshot, that is your backup, only the data unique to that snapshot is removed. So you have backed up the data. So what about restore then? Luckily, each snapshot contains all the information that is needed to restore your data to a new EBS volume. That really helps, isn't it? So when you create an EBS volume based on a snapshot, the new volume begins as an exact replica of the original volume that was used to create the snapshot. So the snapshot will be the exact copy. So don't worry about losing your data or a fraction of it. So the replicated volume loads data in the background so that you can begin using it immediately. If you access data that hasn't been loaded yet, the volume immediately downloads the requested data from Amazon S3 and then continues loading the rest of the volumes data in the background. So the above point I mentioned that the requested data is accessed from S3. Remember that all your snapshot are stored on AWS S3 itself. Let's move on and let's see how it actually works. So let's see how the snapshot works in AWS EBS. This example is very interesting. Don't move and listen to this carefully. Okay, let's carefully see the state one. You have 10 GB of volume. Okay, so you have it now and you have taken the snapshot. So now we have snap A. That is your first snapshot and your snapshot storage is now 10 GB. All set, isn't it? 10 GB of volume, 10 GB of snapshot. All good for now. Then we have a change in the state. We now are in state two. And there is a change in 4 GB of data. And the 6 GB out of our 10 GB remains unchanged. If you see, we have taken a snapshot of 10 GB before and now we create the snapshot B, which is the delta that is the change data of 4 GB from the total 10 GB we had. And where is the other 6 GB now? So the 6 GB now acts as a reference in snapshot B. Just to be clear again, the other 6 GB of unchanged data, which are already copied in and stored in snap A are referenced by snap B rather than again being copied. So this is indicated by the dashed arrow that you see here. So this is how we don't duplicate the data. And out of 10 GB, 4 GB gets changed and we take the backup of 4 GB in the snapshot. And for the remaining 6 GB, we simply refer to the previous snapshot without creating a copy. So you've seen here, this is the 4 GB that we have. And for this 6 GB, we reference it from the snapshot A. Moving on to a much more complex scenario. Don't worry, we will simplify this as well. So we have the stage three and where we have added 2 GB of space, extra space or extra volume or the additional volume that we have. When we create a snapshot C, the 2 GB that was added to the volume will be taken into snapshot C. Okay. The beautiful aspect is that to replicate the 6 GB and 4 GB, it has to just visit snapshot B and for the 6 GB snapshot B already refers to snapshot A. 
just like here so the 4 gb that comes here makes it a reference from the snapshot b and the snapshot d already has a reference of 6 gb from snapshot a so we are done with our snapshot and we haven't duplicated anything see how intelligently we have created three snapshots and we have not even duplicated any data and that's how well aws has designed block storage snapshots as i've already told you that ebs volumes are availability zone specific then how can we migrate them let's see and before moving on i just wanted to tell you this once again so in state one we had 10 gb of volume and we have taken the snapshot we have our snapshot ready that is a snapshot a and in the state two that we have we have the 4 gb changed so the delta is divided into two parts like the 6 gb which was unchanged and the 4 gb which got changed and when we took the snapshot for snap b and uh, we had referenced the 6 gb from the snapshot a and in the third scenario that we had for the state 3 we had added 2 gb additional and that snapshot was taken with snapshot c that is a 2 gb and the 4 gb was referenced by the snapshot b and the 6 gb which was in the snapshot b was referenced by the snapshot a which was the original unchanged block so that's how snapshots work i hope it was informative for you and uh, if you have any doubts please put them in the comment section below and we will check that in the next tutorial so let's see how we can create the ebs volume snapshot so this is the volume that we had where actually i had put my my text.txt file and this is the one that we had attached the 2gb one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a snapshot of this so there are a few options that you can see here modify volume create snapshot delete volume attach volume detach volume and all those things that are already here and this volume currently is in use but we can create a snapshot out of it there won't be any problem as such so click on create snapshot you can give it a name so i am not encrypting it and it's not encrypted as well i can as well add tags or something but i won't add tags as of now just create snapshot so now your create snapshot request has been succeeded and this is a snapshot id that you have then click on close once you have the request in place go to the snapshot tab this is where your snapshot is getting ready now for your usage it'll take some time for us so i'll just pause the video for now and i'll come back once it's done so now my snapshot creation is completed and from this i can create i can as well delete it i can create a volume out of it i can create an image you can create an ami out of it where you can launch a particular instance using this snapshot and you can copy this as well and modify permissions so when you click on create volume what it does it you can create a volume from here from the snapshot that you have and uh, once you click on create ami you can just provide the ami name and this will use the root volume to be the snapshot that you have created right now and you can create the instance as well and you can copy this to any other region that you want as i already told you that the volumes are attached to a particular availability zone but once you create a snapshot you can copy the snapshot to any other region okay and you can encrypt the snapshot as, as well and uh, you can modify permissions as well you can make it public or private which is already there or you can add an account number and add permission for that particular account number if you want to share the snapshot with any other user that you have and there is something that i wanted to discuss uh, i already told you in the points that we discussed was the lifecycle manager so schedule and manage the creation and deletion of ebs snapshots so if you click this create snapshot lifecycle policy what you're going to see is create snapshot lifecycle policy so the data lifecycle manager for ebs snapshot will help you automate the creation and deletion of ebs snapshot based on a schedule volumes are targeted by tags so if i give this a description like uh, my schedule for snap okay and the resource type is the volume and i can tag this name by the name that i have like the my ebs instance and it will take into account this ebs instance and it will create a backup or snapshot of it there is a default schedule that i want that you can have like the default schedule the name you can change the name as well and the running policy is basically for either like 2012 hours or 24 hours based on that and the starting time is 9 utc so here what happens here is like if i keep it as 24 hours and 
i keep it at nine snapshots start being snapshots start being created within one hour of the specified start time so this time usually you would like to give where your application has minimum workload and uh, and you can attach to a particular iem role or choose another role for it to be there so the policy we will create a snapshot for every 24 hours at 9 utc a maximum of seven snapshots will be retained to a particular target volume the oldest snapshot retained will be less than seven days old so as i already told you retain seven means if suppose i change it to five you can see five snapshots okay if suppose the count is i change it to age right interval is five days okay so what will they do is the snapshot will be retained for five days so that's the age of that particular snapshot let's suppose if it is more than five days it will be deleted and if it is less than five days or five days then it will be retained okay if you create the policy you can have this policy for for you and you can use it but i'm not going to use it right now okay let's check how to migrate the ebs volume this is really important for the exam so please do focus on this the first step is that you must remember and i'm reiterating it again that ebs volumes are attached or locked to an availability zone and if you wish to access it in another availability zone then you should follow the steps that we are going to cover now so the first step that we have here is so you create the snapshot of the volume that you have in the required az or you can as well copy the volume to the particular availability zone that's the optional step that we have and finally when you have the snapshot ready create a volume from that in the specific availability zone that you want or the az that is of your choice and that's it that's quite simple isn't it so create the snapshot of the volume else while creating itself make it available in other availability zones and if you have the snapshot ready just create a volume from that in that particular availability zone that you want and that's it so if this is clear let's see a demo on this to get a clear idea on how it works so let's see how we can migrate the ebs volume so this is the 2 gb ebs volume that we had the volume id that we already are seeing here the gp2 volume that we had attached and this is the one that we had added a file i hope you remember mytext.txt where i had written welcome to the channel and uh, this one we had used to create a snapshot as well and the availability zone that it is in right now is ap south 1b okay so once we go to the snapshots and this is the first snapshot that i had created uh, rightly said my first snapshot and to migrate this what i need to do is i need to right click on this one and create the volume and the first thing that you might notice is the volume type that we have is gp2 that's the one that we need the size is 2 gb which is same as the snapshot that we have and the availability zone so i wanted to choose 1a so i can just click on 1a and i don't want to encrypt this right now if i want i can encrypt this as well so remember that so 1a and i can just create the volume okay so create volume request has succeeded close this and once you go to the volume again you will see there is one more volume that is now being created so now that you can see it's in available state right now and we can make use of that in our ec2 instance so it was really very simple to actually migrate a particular volume to any other availability zone and i hope you liked it so we have migrated our volume that was in ap south 1b to ap south 1a so let's move on let's talk about ebs encryption so aws or amazon ebs encryption offers a straightforward encryption solution for your ebs resources that doesn't require you to build maintain and secure your own key management infrastructure so aws uses aws key management service or the aws kms and customer master keys that is a cmk when creating encrypted volume and snapshots and encryption operation occurs on the server that hosts ec2 instances ensuring the security of both data at rest which is the inactive data that is stored physically and the data in transit which is the operational data and in turn ensuring you have security of data between an instance and its attached ebs storage so before encrypting the ebs volume you need to understand a few things so the first thing that you need to understand is amazon ebs encryption offers a straightforward encryption solution for your ebs resources that doesn't require you to build maintain and secure your own key management infrastructure 
I have said this point twice, I guess, but it's very important to understand. So it uses AWS key management service. That is the AWS KMS and customer master keys. That is CMK when creating encrypted volume and snapshot. When you create an encrypted EBS volume and attach it to a supported instance type, the following type of data are encrypted data at rest inside the volume, all data moving between the volume and the instance, all snapshots created from the volume, all volumes created from the snapshots and encryption by default is a region specific setting. If you enable it for a region, you cannot disable it for individual volumes or snapshot in that region. Okay. So when you enable encryption by default, you can launch an instance only if the instance type supports ABS encryption. And next we have is when migrating servers using AWS server migration service or the SMS do not turn on encryption by default. If encryption by default is already on and you are experiencing Delta replication failures, turn off encryption by default. Instead, enable AMI encryption when you create the replication job. So you need to enable AMI encryption and don't turn on encryption by default. When you create a new empty EBS volume, you can encrypt it by enabling encryption for the specific volume creation operation. Uh, if you enable EBS encryption by default, the volume is also automatically encrypted. This is very important for the exam. I want to reiterate it on the second time as well. So when you create a new empty EBS volume, you can encrypt it by enabling encryption for the specific volume creation operation. And if you enable EBS encryption by default, the volume is automatically encrypted. So let's see the visual flow of it. So the first thing we know, we have our EBS snapshot, which is locked to a particular region. Then what you need to do is, which is our second step, is that you encrypt the volume snapshot with the AWS KMS using the KMS key ID. Then go ahead and create a brand new volume from the snapshot. And as we know, the volume created by an encryption snapshot will also be encrypted. And finally, go ahead and attach the volume to your instance. That's it. I hope it was simple to understand. Let's see how we can do it practically. So let's see how we can encrypt an unencrypted volume. Okay, so this is the one that we had created, the snapshot that we had. And uh, this snapshot that we have is also not encrypted. And the one from which we had created is also not encrypted. So once you create some uh, snapshot from an encrypted volume, it will also not be encrypted. So first of all, what I needed to do was I needed to create a snapshot, which I've already created, and this is not encrypted right now. So what I can do is I can copy this to any other region that I want, but I want to keep it in the same region and I want to encrypt this. So if I click on encrypt, I can use AWS EBS default master key. Okay, this is the ID that I have that I have and based on this, it will encrypt the volume. Okay, so just copy this and snapshot copy operation has been initiated. Close this. So it'll take some time for it to encrypt and restore the snapshot that I wanted. That's it. We have created a volume that is encrypted from something that is not encrypted. So let's suppose if you tell me that can I create a volume or create a snapshot from a volume that's unencrypted and encrypt it on the way. So if you right click and create a snapshot and if a volume is already not encrypted, it will not allow you to encrypt it. It's as simple as it is. So the best way is to do the way we did. Create the snapshot, copy this to the other region, enable snapshot or enable the encrypt the snapshot option and use this feature to encrypt this. So the one that we had created is not encrypted. The one that we created with or copied to is encrypted. So we have created a encrypted volume from an unencrypted snapshot. That's fascinating, isn't it? <laughs> Let's move on. So when we were using our EC2 instances before and we were using our free tier instance, Amazon 2 AMI the, or the Linux 2 AMI, which is a general purpose T2.micro instance and with one CPU and one GB memory and it comes with default EBS only storage option and and during the storage configuration we had the option to delete the storage upon termination. I hope you remember this but not always every instance comes with EBS. Some instances also come with instance store. 
So we have discussed what is block storage and how remarkable that was, isn't it? So let's see a comparative difference between the instance store and the EPS. An instance store provides temporary block level storage for your instance. The storage is located on disk that are physically attached to the host computer. So the instance store is a physical drive, uh, whereas EBS volume is a network drive. So instance stores are physical disks that are attached to the instances. And instance store is ideal for temporary storage of information that changes frequently, such as buffers, caches, scratch data, and other temporary content. So the size of an instance store, as well as the number of devices available, varies by instance type. And the instance storage or instance store is also called as ephemeral storage. And if you're wondering what does ephemeral mean, so I'm sorry if you feel we are digging into every small thing. I'm going to the details for all the terms because if you know the meaning of it, I promise you that you will remember this or the remember the concept forever. Our motto is learn once and never forget. So getting back to what is ephemeral, it is something that lasts for a very short time. Just like if you trace it in terms of real world example, it's like a plant that grows flowers and then dies in a few days. So the plant is ephemeral. It has lived for a short time. Similarly, an ephemeral store provides temporary block level storage for your instance. So what are the benefits then for ephemeral storage or instance storage? First one, is peak I.O. performance. They provide a very good I.O. for the operation that you execute. Uh, the best for content which is temporary. So for example, you are doing photo, audio or video processing. You do that and download the file to store it somewhere safe and you are not worried about it being stored on the disk, isn't it? Or if you wish to use them as cache or buffer. And the important aspect of it is if you restart the machine, the data will still be protected. We discussed about the pros, let's see some of the cons that are the disadvantages that we have. So if you stop or terminate your instance, the data will be lost. And instance store cannot be resized and should be backed by the user manually. Please remember that instance stores cannot be resized and should be backed up by the user manually. So for the ephemeral storage, it lasts for a very short time and ephemeral storage is a non-billable resource that is included in the cost of the instance and it comes attached to the instance as well as we already discussed. So if it's closer to the instance, it is a physical drive and it will be faster to access even if there is no network available. So even though there is no network available as it is attached as a physical drive, it will be faster to access. So as rightly said, things closer to you are faster to access than the one that are a bit far from you. So if you are in confusion that whether to use the Elastic Block Store or an Instance Store, ask yourself whether you are fine with losing your data. If not, then use the EBS. So we'll see how the Instance Store looks like. So go ahead and click on Launch Instance and choose the Linux to AMI. And here, if you go down, you see the options here like Instance Storage, EBS only, and the one that you see here, M M5AD, large that you have 1 to 75 ssd these are the ephemeral storage that you have here so let's see i would choose something like this okay and click on next okay and click on add storage see now the volume type that you see here is ephemeral 0 and nvme 0 n1 and 150 GB you get from this, uh, from the ephemeral storage and it's going to be really fast. And uh, we have a NVMe SSD here. And basically like ephemeral storage or the instance stores are physical drives connected to your instance. It is hardware encrypted as well. And for now, I'm not going to create any machine or create any instance using this ephemeral storage because it's very costly. And I don't want to pay for this for free tier it's not even available for that as well.